Hello and welcome again to Emotion Ocean Talks with Gabriele Kerber. In this new episode I want to take you once again to the Red Sea. But there I'm going to introduce you to a species which you can also, also encounter in the coral reefs of Australia or Indonesia. And that species is the fluted giant clam Tridagna squamosa. The fluted giant clam is a blur of color in the coral reefs of the Indo-Pacific, where they live at average water temperatures of 25 degrees Celsius. The blue shades which we see here is actually an exception which is typical for the Red Sea. In all other reefs where we find those clams, it's usually yellow, brownish and greenish colors. We currently recognize eight species of Tridacna, of which Tridacna squamosa, the flute giant clam, is one of the smaller ones, with only up to 40 centimeters of shell length and 15 kg of weight. The biggest one, Tridacna gigas, here in the picture, is around 120 centimeters and 200 kg in average, and even reach bigger sizes. All of the giant clams live for a long time, means 70 to 80 years is not an exception. And they live in coral reefs at a depth of 0 to 20 meters, so actually in the well-lit part of the coral reef. The reason here for are symbiotic algae, zooxanthella, living in the mantle, the visible fleshy part of the clam. And those symbiotic algae, as all plants, can assimilate minerals and use the energy of the sunlight in order to form carbohydrates. The Tridacna genus is the only one among all the bulwelves which has those zooxanthella or symbiotic algae. But not all their food is produced by those algae. They also filter plankton out of the water and therefore they have two openings in the mantle one with um, extensions where the water streams in and another one which is smooth where the water flows out. In between the water hits the gills for breathing, gas exchange, as well as the filtering apparatus for feeding. The zooxanthella, the symbiotic algae of the Tridacna species are actually close relatives of the symbiotic algae living in corals. We take this as an indication that the evolution of the giant clams took place in ancient coral reefs. Basically all mollusks are hermaphrodites, which means they don't have separate sexes, but the same individual can produce eggs and sperms. And because bivalves, and so also tridacna, belongs to the mollusks, also they are hermaphrodites. As youngsters, they are sequential hermaphrodites, which first produce sperm and then later eggs. With aging, this differentiation doesn't happen that much anymore. And more mature clams are capable of producing sperm and eggs at the same day. The spawning of the giant clams can be triggered through environmental factors lunar cycle, temperatures, uh, nutrition in the water, but perhaps even pollution. And those um, triggers can cause a mass spawning. So what happens after the mass spawning of the tridacna of the giant clams? There are eggs released into the water. There is sperm released into the water. Sperm plus eggs means we will get fertilized eggs. So 
The fertilized eggs sink down in the water and it takes about 12 hours for them to develop into the first larval stage, which are the trochophore larvae. Trochophores can swim with help of several bands, one or several bands of cilia, so little extensions here. The trochophore larvae don't sink anymore. As I said, they can swim with the help of their cilia. So they then develop further into the second larval stage. And this larval stage are the villager larvae. Also the villager can swim and this now is the first stage in which those um, clams to be have a shell and this is also the stage in which they ingest their zooxanthellas, the symbiotic algae. The development from the trochophore larvae to the villager larvae takes approximately 36 hours. The late villager larvae will look for a place to settle down. We already said that the place, the location for the clam is very important because they need a slight current for their plankton filtering. So is it now just pure luck where they will settle down? No, it isn't because the villager, as I said, can swim. It's highly motile. And this is the one, this is the first, or this is the one who decides first where to try to settle down. And then it will metamorph into the young clam, so into the spat. The development from the villager to the spat can take everything between 5 and 15 days. That depends on temperature, on food availability and so on. Now this bed is settling down. It creates the bias threads with which to connect to the substratum. And we would think, okay, that's it. If the villager chose poorly, the spat will have a tough life. But that's not so because the spat is still motile. So if the spot where the villager settled down and the spat is now located isn't a good one, the spat can willingly break those bristle threads and move on to find a better spot. And the spat can actually do that several times until the shell size is several centimeters. Only then they use their, lose their motility and really remain at the place where they are. But so they actually can search around a little bit for the perfect spot to stay at. And then the spot will grow, a spat, sorry, the spat will grow into a nice giant clam. which then will spawn again once it's mature and the life cycle is closed. Tridecna squamosa lives in close embrace with other organisms in the reef. Their scaled outer shell, which gave them their name fluted giant clam, makes it easy for other organisms to settle on them or to live in them.